Hey YouTubians, what's up? I'm another XYZ and welcome back to another club banger. And today we're hanging out in r slash dating hell. Now with a few of these, the titles of them were TLDRs, so I don't want to ruin the story before it starts. So I've kind of redacted some of the titles on them. So if you notice that there are no titles, that's what it is. So let's go ahead and just hop right on in. I met a guy on a dating app and we hit it off. He said he was out of town in LA visiting family, so we texted back and forth for a week until he came back and we could meet up. Based on our fun flirting, I picked out a quirky little restaurant, sent him the address, and asked if the location was okay. He said he lived downtown, and this restaurant was in the suburbs, about 20 minutes away from him. He said it was great. I suggested brunch around 11. He said one was better for him. At 12, he texted and asked if we could make it 2 o'clock instead. Then, at 1.30, he texted again and rescheduled for three. I was dressed, ready, and had already left the house, but whatever. So I ended up waiting in the parking lot. Just before three, he texted me to let me know he was on his way. At 3.45, he showed up in an Uber, explaining that he'd taken the train, then an Uber from the train station because he was having car trouble. And that's why he'd been delayed all afternoon. Okay, fine. If he'd been upfront with me about the car trouble, I would definitely have chosen somewhere much more convenient to him. We grabbed some seats, and he proceeded to explain his car trouble. He'd been driving to LA the week before, about 10 hours away from the city we live in, and agreed to do a favor for a friend, which involved picking up a carload of undocumented immigrants from Arizona and driving them across the California border for $1,500. He then claimed that he'd been stopped at the border between Arizona and California, arrested for smuggling and had his car impounded. Yes, this was probably a red flag but we were laughing about the whole thing and having a pretty good time. I told him his nickname from that time on would be Coyote. I don't know if the whole story is true or not, but why would you make up something like that on a first date? And even if it was true, still, why would you tell it on a first date? The check came, but we were enjoying ourselves and didn't want the date to end quite yet. He immediately signed the check and sent it back without writing in a tip. So I pulled some cash out and dropped it on the table as we got up. He got this really confused and stunned look on his face and said, what's that for? I said, it's a tip. Don't worry, I've got it. He replied with, oh, um, okay, still looking really puzzled. It was like the whole concept of tipping was foreign to him. Since he was new to the city, he hadn't seen a lot of it. So we decided on an impromptu tour of the canyons. We hopped in my car and cruised up to the mountains for some great scenery. When we got to a scenic overlook and stopped to get out to see the view, he started to get a little handsy. We were still connecting, and to be fair, I'd put some effort into looking really good. Again, first date, so I kind of let it go. We took in the view of the canyon, and I mentioned that you could almost see the huge lake from where we were, which of course he'd also never seen. So we hopped back into my car and headed all the way out past the other side of the city to see the lake, stopping at a little local drive through for some shakes along the way. The shakes were my idea, so I paid for them. We got out to the lake, and then decided to live dangerously by taking my little compact car along a badly maintained gravel road to a popular lookout spot. Some of the potholes we dodged could have swallowed my car. We laughed the whole way about how crazy we were, and I was thinking this would be a great story to tell about how we met. We watched the sunset over the lake, still talking, when we started discussing movies. I mentioned a movie he'd never seen before, and he said, let's go to your place and watch it. Well, okay, I wasn't getting any serious creeper vibes from him, so I said, sure, let's go. As soon as I got to my place and started the movie, he turned into an octopus. He was all over me like a cheap suit, and the clothes were coming off. The date had been great, but I had to be up in six hours for work, so I offered to drop him off at his place. He went quiet. Then he asked if he could get his shoes back on. Uh, yeah. We started the drive, and he was absolutely silent. Then about five minutes in, he just went off. He started in on how he didn't know of any girl who would drive him home at 11 o'clock at night if she really had to be up at 5 and it wasn't logical. He went on about how he felt disrespected and used, and that I must just pick up men to use them for sex. Wait, what? I just pick up men and use them for sex? Yeah, sure. After spending eight hours running all over creation with them. He spent the whole drive ranting about how I had used him and treated him like trash, and he didn't know of any girl who wouldn't just let him spend the night and then drop him off in the morning. That's right, he'd been expecting to spend the night at my place on a first date. We got into downtown and he refused to tell me where he lived, insisting on me dropping him off at a 7-Eleven. We argued about it because I didn't feel right just dropping him off on some random street corner, but he was having none of it. 
I stopped the car, and we got out, still arguing. He got into my face and yelled at me that I'd made him feel like trash and he wasn't feeling it. I tried to explain that I just wasn't there yet, and he cut me off and pointed out that I'd invited him back to my place, so I was certainly somewhere, and that if I didn't have those intentions, I should tell people up front. Then he stormed off toward the 7-Eleven. That's the last I saw of him. I suspect he may have actually not had a place to stay, and that's why he was trying to sleep at my house, and why he wouldn't tell me where he lived. Who's using whom now? I get that leaving a tip and paying for two shakes doesn't balance the expense for lunch, but I did spend a full tank of gas giving this guy the grand tour, so I feel like we're kinda even. Two days later, he sent me a one-line text thanking me and saying he'd had a great time. Okay, yeah, sure. We'll just copy and paste over the original ending, and that'll be just peachy. Insert eye roll here. All I've got to say is this guy had wildly incorrect expectations. Um, under no circumstances is anybody obligated to do anything for you, regardless of what you think the situation is. And kind of like she said, it may be one of those situations where maybe this guy is perhaps homeless. And I've never heard of this strategy of using dating apps to find people to sleep at their houses, but... I feel like there's more effective ways of getting help if you are indeed homeless. Um, I know that there's a lot of resources out there. I know they aren't the best. I know some of them are great, some of them aren't, but there are a lot of resources out there for people like that. So if you're in that kind of situation, you can definitely look up those things locally and you can find some help there. But aside from that, this person was just, this person honestly went on a really cool date and then just blew it at the end is what it sounds like. This one was also one that had a TLDR at the beginning, so we're just going to jump right in. For context, we matched on Tinder a few months ago, and we've been flirting through texts ever since. Both of us have tried making plans, but we work in the entertainment industry in LA, and things just get in the way. I should preface by saying that, in fairness to her, our plans were last second. We just happened to be texting each other when we realized we were both free. We had a short window before the bars closed. That being said, I chose a bar in her neighborhood so she didn't have to go out of her way, and when I arrived, a 30 minute drive, she said she wasn't coming because her neighborhood isn't safe at night and she couldn't afford a lift. Obviously, I wouldn't want her to put herself at risk, but she had plenty of time to figure that out before I drove all the way out there. At that point, she was either catfishing me, or she was not very courteous. I was hoping she'd apologize, but she didn't. She said she wanted to meet up later, but I told her that would only happen if she reached out to make plans. I explained that I needed to know if she actually wants to meet me, and that since we haven't met, I can't actually guarantee she's not trolling me. So she sends me a video of herself. I think it's going to be an apology, but it's actually just to prove she's real. She goes on video to mock me for being concerned that she's catfishing me. I tell her that it's unclear whether or not she's taking it seriously that I was upset. When she sends me a YouTube video about what Sagittariuses are like, going on to explain that it's not her fault, she's the way she is, and that I need to accept it and work around it. That's when I told her I'm no longer interested in meeting her. That's just another example of when your astrological sign doesn't equate to you being a jerk to someone and mocking that person for thinking you're catfishing them. What a jerk. It's probably a good thing that they didn't actually go on any dates because the moment I saw that, I was like, that's going to be a, a huge nope. And also uh, just a big yikes for me. Uh, don't use your fake magic astrological signs to determine um, how you're going to act to somebody. Your actions are your choice. They're not determined by some sort of moon or star. Sorry about that. I don't think astrology is a real thing. Astronomy is a real thing, but astrology is not. It honestly seems like all of the good ones have TLDRs at the beginning. Kind of a trend in dating hell as they start with TLDRs, so we're just going to jump into this one. Warning, might trigger some unpleasant memories for some. I was 14 going on 15 when he asked me out. I was young and dumb, but never in love. He had a southern charm, and he said I was pretty despite my weight. I fell for that hook, line, and sinker. He was nice, and he would give me cute gifts, until he tried to pressure me into sleeping with. Now, I was naive, but I was not stupid enough to recklessly sleep with the first guy I kissed. When I refused, he became violent and cruel. Throughout my freshman year, he would slap me across the face, push me against the wall, and let's say violent threats so bad I was scared of my own shadow. I didn't go to anyone because I was embarrassed. I was scared that my family would compare me to my mother who was in an abusive marriage. He isolated me, friend. Those I called my friends, and he made me believe that he was the only one who cared about me. Until one month before summer vacation, he grabbed my hand and squeezed, so hard I could feel my bones rubbing together. Adapt moment, I realized I had to get away. When school was over, I ran to my mother, I, and I told her everything. So my ex was a charmer. He easily tricked my mom into thinking that he was a good gentleman. But after hearing what he'd done to me for nearly a year, 
It was as if time stopped and the devil himself crapped himself. My mother grabbed her keys and drove off in her car. Two hours later, she came back with bruised knuckles. She looked at me and told me that he would not be bothering me anymore. I was confused until I saw him at the store a week later. He had two black eyes and bruises all over his face and arms. My mom tracked him down and beat him for beating me. He threatened to call the cops, but she all but dared him to do it. He never did, and that made me realize that he was and still is a coward. I never heard anything from him again. And with the wonders of Facebook, my mom kind of did something I think is stupid, but that's the way she is. She posted a picture of him and shared it saying, don't let your daughter date this man. All I've got to say is I hope that the OP is in a better place now, and um, it just sounds like this person was very, very abusive. I myself was in kind of an interesting relationship where emotionally things were a little bit strange. My significant other emotionally cheated on me, was kind of weirdly mentally abusive. I never really had to deal with physical abuse. That's a whole completely different ball game. And it sounds like although this person's mother took a violent route, they were still able to get out. A lot of the times it doesn't work that well. Um, a lot of the times those kind of situations blow up and don't end up like working really, really well at all. Um, I can't say I'm an expert on the situation, but I know that that is a really tough situation to get out of. So I hope the OP is doing well, at least at this point. All right, y'all. Well, thank you for joining me in r slash dating hell. The last one got honestly a lot more like dark than I was expecting it to. But the other ones were definitely interesting to say the very least. Uh, also, like always, if you have any suggestions for subreddits, drop them in the comment section down below. And at the end of every one of my videos, no glove, no love. Peace.